It's been a while since I've camped at the deciduous forests of Pennsylvania. In contrast to my usual camping grounds, these forests are lush with greenery, mycology, and an incredible assortment of insects and fauna. Just wait till you see what a couple of short days has in store for us. Okay, so I'm processing firewood and holy cow, check out the caterpillar I just found on my tarp. This has to be the coolest caterpillar. This is number one on my list now. It's got to be some kind of December moth caterpillar because I've seen them in books and everything, but I don't think I've ever seen one in real life. This thing is amazing. This thing is beautiful. How are you guys doing? I'm Chris Ignato and you're watching Nature Here and Now. So I'm going to be camping out in this amazing deciduous forest tonight and I've already found several really cool things. I found what has to be a, uh, a December moth caterpillar, which I didn't even know those things were in Pennsylvania. It's incredible. But this right here this has to be some sort of lichen moth. It looks so similar to the painted lichen moth. It's got to be the, the scarlet striped lichen moth. Or actually, no, it's the scarlet winged lichen moth. Either way it goes, this thing is just sheerly a true beauty. Beautiful, isn't it? I can only imagine what type of stuff I'm going to find tonight because, of course, I'm going to set up a light trap, and I can't wait. I'm not going to pull up any bark that's not loose. Because that's just not cool. What on earth was that? Okay, so maybe I didn't find a whole lot under this log, but I did find those sweat bees, which are really cool because that is an indigenous species of bee. There are a lot of native species of bee. You've got the, the miners, the leaf cutters, the digger bees, of course, the bumblebees, uh, some of the mason bees, and, you know, of course, the sweat bees. They're really important and often overlooked pollinators. When people say save the bees, they generally think specifically of honeybees, which are non-native. They're usually from, they're usually Italian or Russian varieties. These sweat bees are really cool, but they're, they're pretty small. Their coloration and markings definitely make up for their lack in size, though. They're purely stunning, very iridescent and metallic looking, often bronzy or metallic green. Gorgeous. See what else there is, huh? Okay, you hear that sound? That's the alarm call of a chipmunk, like a distress call. Well, more like an alarm call. It's that high-pitched squeak. You often find chipmunks in the hilly, the rocky hills of Pennsylvania. So this place is no exception.
In the blaring hot heat wave of this July afternoon, I decided to seek out a little reprieve by visiting the lake shore while the breeze was in full swing. And it did little to cool my body as the sun was at its zenith and the sky was clear. Well, at the water's edge, I saw I was not the only one determined to rest in the moderate breeze. Dragonflies of all sorts were perched among the greenery, holding on when the wind was strong and then quickly patrolling the shoreline and hunt for food when the breeze let up. Amberwings chased each other about, while pennants graced the scene with all their majesty. Eastern pond hawks, however, are as equally at home on flat surfaces as they are in flowers and stems. For me, though, the Halloween pennants were definitely best in show. Yeah, it's sunny out and it's hot, but check out this little turtle's nest. The eggs have hatched probably last month and the little turtles headed towards the water. The sun though, it got its best of me and I had to seek salvation. How on earth is a beaver going to carry this massive tree away? That thing's bigger round than I am. It is hot out here. But you know what? Sitting back next to this mossy log, it got me thinking. It's a deciduous forest. I'm gonna be spending the night out here. I'm up in the hills, there's rocks everywhere ferns as far as the eye can see, all the downed trees are covered with this moss. This has to be a cool place for millipedes, and maybe tonight I'll find maybe an American millipede. Uh, it'd be pretty cool if I found a flatback millipede, but, you know, the American millipede would be pretty cool. So, fingers crossed, we'll see what happens tonight. I returned to base camp, set the fire, and laid in the hammock until food was ready and the evening rolled in. Just before dinner, I set the light traps and turned on the ultraviolets. Then I headed out into the woods while the light trap did its work. I walked for about a mile into the forest. The sky was looking heavy with rain, so I didn't see quite a lot of activity. Aside from this cool dewdrop spider in her egg case. And I also found this really cool cluster of lacewing eggs just under this leaf here. But to be honest, all I could really think about were my lights and whatever visitors loitered about them. But get this. Just as I pulled a 180 on my explorations, I discovered an all-time favorite of mine. Slime mold plasmodium. Many, in fact. I find slime molds to be one of the most exciting and intriguing organisms on this green earth. Previously mistaken for lower form fungi, slime molds are a type of shape-shifting organism known as myxomacetes and are pretty much unlike anything else on Earth. Once thought of as low-form fungi, these protists are not fungi at all, but are more realistically considered terrestrial amoebas. 
What we are seeing here is the transformation between plasmodium, which is the mobile eating stage of slime molds, to the stationary fruiting stage known as sporangium. Once sporangium is completely developed, it will produce spores that will germinate into amoebic reproductive bodies that reproduce either sexually or asexually. They're really interesting. This stage between plasmodium and sporangium, to me, is the most exciting stage. The chaotic looking puddle of pink, white, or even yellow, depending on the species, morphing into a thousand perfect spheres, rising up on tiny stalks to become fruiting bodies, all in a matter of hours, I find simply incredible. But while losing myself in such magnificent carpets of mystery, I also lost track of time. I gotta head back to the lights. While approaching the light trap, I immediately see it was not in vain. There's literally hundreds of insects and moths and all sorts of cool stuff. I uploaded a video focusing exclusively on everything I found at this light trap, but I'll include some of the stuff in this video. Like this awesome pale metanema moth. I love the, the geometric stripes on this thing, and this is one of the first times I've seen the species. This is some kind of zale moth. I'm just not sure what specific species it is. This little pink fern moth is definitely one of my favorites for the night. But I happen to be really partial towards any of the slug moths, pretty much because their caterpillars are so awesome. And to be honest, I'm a little embarrassed about this insect here. I mistook it for a fish fly, when in actuality, it's a female dubson fly. And the dead giveaway is the fact that it's a lot larger than your average fish fly. The male dubson flies, which I have yet to find, have massive mandibles on them and often freak a lot of people out. The jaws on this female, though, are the ones to worry about. They can definitely draw blood if you're not careful. And one of my favorite moth species for this year are the lichen moths. I found several painted lichen moths in New Jersey and fell in love with them, but my favorite is this one right here. It's a lifer for me, and it is the scarlet winged lichen moth. I mean, it's just beautiful. I've attracted several rosy maple moths, and now I wish I filmed them because this one is rather pale in contrast to the, the few I found just 10 minutes ago. This little beauty here is a, a Hebrew moth, and it gets its name because it somewhat resembles the Hebrew script. Now, this is a blinded sphinx, and I see at least three or four of these every year. I've got a really cool video on them, and I'll include the link right here. Another species I've seen a lot of on this trip are the clemming moths, and I really like them not only because they're cool looking, but they're also a subspecies of the tiger moths, and they're just really interesting and cool looking moths. The coolest moth of the evening is definitely this luna moth though. I mean, the sheet is just teeming with life. Surprisingly, I got really into this Detana moth because from the right angles, it literally looks like a little hollowed out log or tree branch. I guess when it's alarmed or something, it actually curls up its wings at the ends and it really completes the picture of a, a hollow branch or something. Not sure why, but I really like this moth. Again, while there were a lot of insects at the light trap, the moths, well, aside from the tiny midges, were by far the dominant group of insects represented. It's almost 3 a.m., and I'm finding it very difficult to pull myself away from this light trap. I mean, every time I look, there's something new and exciting to find. But I don't want to get up late in the day because there's still a whole lot to discover out there. Have a look at this. This is the American millipede and is pretty much the biggest millipede species we have in the northeastern United States. 
this individual is easily four inches long and they don't get a whole lot bigger than that. Its underlying base tone is a slate gray and it's usually a little bit of red at the margins of the, the body segments. But this one has a whole lot more red than what I'm used to. Now I was hoping to find some flat-backed millipedes, uh, maybe Aphelaria virginiensis or Alleghaniensis or something, but this is actually really cool because it's got so much red on it. So let me show you some closer footage. Millipedes are a lot slower than centipedes. They're also harmless unless, of course, you eat one. I love watching that forward moving wave as the millipedes truck along and search for food or anything of interest. Well, it's the next day and I am heading out. There's a meadow with some various flowers in it and I definitely want to hit that because meadows, they're usually pretty bustling with insects and other wildlife activity. These echinaceas are a common species that most people are used to, but often referred to as cone flowers. While they have medicinal properties, pollinators love these flowers because, as you can see, they're good producers of nectar. Like most meadows, you're going to find a lot of black-eyed Susans mingled in with the wild bergamots. This is another cool flower I only see maybe a couple times a year. It's known as Indian blanket and it's got all the colors of the sunset. Okay, my favorite thing about this meadow are these black dragonflies. They're definitely hovering around this meadow a lot more so than anywhere near the water. And they seem to be a lot more bold than the other species. I can get pretty close to them, which is allowing me to get some pretty cool slow motion shots. Okay, I can film these things all day long, so I better move on. Okay, so setting up that light trap was by far worth the while. I mean, hundreds and hundreds of different moth species visited the trap, and it was just really exciting. Uh, a lot of beautiful species, and I think my favorite was the scarlet-winged lichen moths. Those things are just beautiful. I mean, they're, they look like a rainbow with lots of red. And there are a couple other lichen moth species too. And then I was gifted with the presence of a luna moth and then woke up today to another luna moth on a tree. That beautiful thing. Uh, both males. So that was really cool. I mean, oh so many cool things to look at. And then I headed out into the forest and found some really cool slime molds, which is something I'm really into. And they were in the plasmodium stage as far as I know. So that was really cool. And I actually revisited the one location and it completely changed because slime molds move across the landscape and they, they evolve, you know? Um, they're just incredible, incredible organisms they are. Anyways, I want to say thanks a lot for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Once again, I'm Chris Ignato, signing out.